gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to make this real quick. Why? Because I got work to do. 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 I got... I... Anyway, I got work to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to do this real quick because I was doing some general searches of stuff and I happened to stumble across this. I, I didn't even know this was there. Didn't care. Wasn't my research. For our Fourth Amendment program individuals and our securing one's property, um, the Sorry, Securing One's Property, that's the Fourth Amendment program, and the individuals whom we are dealing with the Acknowledgement of the Debt program, the DAP program. I need you all to pay attention. Everybody's afraid. Oh, we're going to have to go to court. Of course you're going to go to court. How dare you sit up there and be afraid of some stupid person in a dress? How, how dare you? Sorry. Let's see if I can explain it to you so that you get it better. Ladies and gentlemen, I started my career in small claims court. Go back and look at when small claims court was created. You'll see it started in California. Go ahead. You don't believe me? Go ahead, because I was there. And they were doing all kind of commercials. That's where Judge Wapner and all of them come in at. I even had the prosecution in the court trying to say, and he says that the court is like arbitration. <laughs> Stupid mother. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I would go after companies. You violate my right, I took you to small claims court. Why? Because I know that I didn't have to deal with no stupid lawyer. In most states, lawyers are not permitted to enter into small claims court. Okay? In most states, lawyers are not supposed to enter into small claims court. They can't. So, what is small claims court? Small claims court is basically arbitration, people. You agree to let that person sitting up on the bench determine whether or not who's right and wrong. There's a right and a wrong way to love somebody. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. You don't need to have an education of a lawyer. You don't even need to talk like a lawyer. It's, the law says this, they didn't do it. We have an agreement, they didn't follow it. That's it. It's an equitable court. So, start studying the rules of your small claims court. There was a gentleman, he was talking to me, but he kept calling me and asking me for stuff. And I said, no, you're going to have to pay for another consult. No, you don't just uh, sit up here and pimp me. You're, you're sitting up here gaining a profit off of the information I'm giving you, and I don't have a problem with that, people. But he was calling me all the time, and all he wanted, 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 wanted was things. I don't like being used. I am not your cushion where you get to poke pins in me all the time talking about I need more information. You got some more information in you. Come on, let's see if I can pull some more information out of you. We're we, 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 we not that type of cushion, y'all. All right, back to are defrauded homeowners of America, pay attention. Our side packers, pay attention. Those wonderful individuals who are part of the Acknowledging the Debt program, pay attention. And you, securing one's property individuals, pay attention. We'll be putting together a small claims packet for you. Universal, so that it'll fit for each one of you. I'll be working on that started tomorrow, the 17th. Right now, I'm still... <sighs> See if I can show you guys something. This is page 35 of the writ of certiary. I'm adding enough to the writ of certiary to where people can take out whatever they don't want in there so that they don't have to do much. There'll be a section for them to add their own stuff. There'll be bullet points for them to tell them, yes, amend this, amend that. But I'm just going to throw it out at you. I'm going to explain. I'll do a video explaining the writ of certiorari. Technically, the video is already done. Just haven't published it yet. Okay? We'll get there. But I'm, I'm working on it. Now, let's talk to that group we talked about, the DAP people. DAP fall into the DAP. Yes, the Acknowledgement of the Debt Program and the Secure and One's Property Program. Need both of you to pay attention to this. What you don't know is what's going on in the background. 
we're documenting that you and your creditor are partners. Partners, partners. You got to be a partner, partner, partner. Understand what I'm saying, partner? Tupac, partner. Okay, so since you are partners, there are certain things that partners get to do to each other. You get to give credits to each other, not that other stupid stuff y'all think about. No, we're talking about this type of partnership. Stop it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you get to give credits to each other. So the bank, the bank, the bank received money from the Federal Reserve. The money that they received was supposed to come to you. So we're doing the accrual method. Doing the accrual method. Yeah, the accrual method. You guys didn't listen to the video on the credits? A little youngster explaining to y'all what the accrual method is? The accrual method is basically this. I've already explained this three times today, so let's, let's do it again. Because you don't have to go and read GAP. Nobody, you don't need to be a rocket scientist. The accrual method works like this. Government has contracts with people. People have what's known as government contracts. And in that government contract, the government is supposed to pay them. How much are they supposed to pay? Well, usually the government is supposed to pay them whatever the contract says. And there are no penalties if they're late. No, 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 there are no late fees or nothing like that. Can't do that with the government. That's where the contract's written up. So let's say I do work for them in January. And the agreement is that they're supposed to pay me $500,000 for the work I just did for them because I'm a contractor. February goes by. March goes by, June goes by, July comes, and then I finally receive the payment. Hold on. Do I mark that on my July finances? Of course not. I have a contract with the government. I'm using the accrual method. I mark that in my January finance. So I expended, the contract was $500,000. So I expended $500,000. And because I did the invoice with government, I was supposed to receive $500,000. So that's $500,000. Let, let's do the math, y'all, so y'all can see it. Because some of y'all need to see a demonstration. So let's do the math. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. It, it'll be real quick. This thing doesn't take that long. So we have $500,000. So we got our five. Uno. Hey, it ain't clicking. Hold on. I got to hit my touch screen. No, there it is. Zero, zero. And zero, zero, zero. Uh-oh. That ain't supposed to be coming up. I didn't hit that. All right, $500,000. But this is a negative. So, and now we got to have a positive because I, I just expended that. Now, the government's supposed to pay me, so I did an invoice for $500,000. Five, zero, zero. Oh, no, no, got to get rid of that. Sorry, I don't know what all this popping up on my screen is. I ain't touching that. Hold on, let's clear this. Let's clear. 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 All right, so we got to do the 500 again. Five, zero, 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 zero. Five hundred thousand dollars. That's the positive minus because that's the money I done spent. Five hundred thousand dollars. Come on. Zero, zero, zero. Oh, I'm sorry. I did. Yeah, that's. I already put the minus there, and so guess what? That if I have five hundred thousand minus five hundred thousand, that gives me zero. The book has to balance. The book must balance. In the accrual method, the book has to balance. You do the math. The month the debt is incurred. You do the math. The month the debt is incurred. That's the accrual method. You do the math, what you spent, and what you were supposed to receive. They offset each other. This is positive 500,000 and a negative 500,000 equals zero. That's the accrual method. That's it. It is not complicated, ladies and gentlemen. That's why the books always balance. Shh, don't tell nobody. Now, do you have to do the math every single month? all throughout the month, all throughout the year? No. You can simply say that you're using the accrual method and do the math at the end of the year. But don't be like them, them cash method taxpayers. Go back and look at IRS tax topic 453. The cash method taxpayers, they, don't, they ain't got nothing coming. What's a cash method taxpayer? You've been a cash method taxpayer all this time. What do, what do you mean by cash method? Well, basically what you do is you wait till the end of the year to get your paperwork from your employer, 
and get all the other paperwork from someplace else, and then you give somebody else your paperwork to do the paperwork for you. The, 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 the cash method is the lazy method. Wait until the end of the year. That's why you don't get no benefits for doing a cash method. Pay attention. Cash method taxpayers usually do their math after the beginning of the year. You know, when everybody else is doing it so they can get their little refund check. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a cruel method taxpayer, you're doing your taxes by the 31st. You're crunching the numbers or giving it to your accountant to crunch the numbers. And you've already done the addition and subtraction. Pay attention. Addition, subtraction. Addition, subtraction. That's all, you, that's all you're doing. You're not doing no multiplication. Addition, subtraction. That's it. It's simple. It's basic math. It's a crow method. And remember, your balance at the end is always going to be zero. Why? Because your net operating losses, you're writing off as a deduction. It's always going to be zero. You're going to balance your books. That's why, pay attention. Shh, y'all have heard this. At 12 o'clock midnight, the banks balanced their book. They zero out the account. Everybody was misunderstanding why they zeroed out the account. I don't know why. It's the accrual method. That's why they do it every night. Because they normally file quarterly when they do their taxes. It's the benefit, ladies and gentlemen. It's the benefit, simply the benefit. Okay, now this is what we this is what I told my people. I said when you have a, an agreement with the bank, pay attention. You have a promissory note, you've given it to a local Federal Reserve agent. That's called banking business. So when you have an agreement with the bank, banking business. You're operating as a bank for the capacity of being a any Federal Reserve Bank. It's okay. Don't worry about it. If you don't understand, don't worry about it. Just pay attention. Then that's called a partnership, ladies and gentlemen. Partner. And because you have a partnership with a partner, there are certain things you get to do. Certain IRS tax filings you get to do between you and your partner. Partner. And so in the background, that's what we've been doing. So people in like, what's taking so long? How come nothing? We haven't heard from y'all. Shut it up. You're not doing the work we are, and it takes time to get that stuff done. I had to teach this to people. Everybody else had the same mindset as you. Everybody else had the same mindset as you. They didn't understand none of this. They couldn't put A and B together. You know, they, they sitting up there, A and B don't go to gas. It does. A, B, and B. Okay? Leave me alone. All right. This is the IRS code. Title 26. Title 26. Title 26. See that right there? Title 26 is the IRS code. It's the code. See, code. IRS Title 26 code. The IRS Title 26 code. It's the IRS code. Title 26 is the IRS code. Just remember that. Okay. These are the definitions for the whole code. The definition for the whole code. Not part of the code, not some of the code. The whole code. Hold on now. As used in this title, which means it's used throughout the entire title. Where not otherwise distinctly expressed or manifest, meaning that's the exception to the rule. There's always an exception to the rule with the intent thereof. We don't care about per, 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 per persons or partnerships or corporations. We don't care about that right now. Okay? But the term person shall be construed to mean and include an individual, an estate, a partnership, a trust, an association, a company, a corporation. Aren't they all the same thing? You better believe they are. People say, well, this is a it is a legal person. No, this is also a natural person. That's why they did it that way. It incorporates all partnerships, all estates, all trusts, all associations. Include does not necessarily mean exclude. So if there is no exception to the inclusion, then you can't make one. So it includes everything. Now let's understand what a partner partnership is. Okay, partner. The term partnership includes a syndicate. Oh, like syndicated crime? No, like syndicated television shows like Friends. Oh, it's in syndication. Okay. Anyway, groups, poolings. That's right, partnership, pooling agreement. Pay attention, agreement, pooling, servicing, and pooling agreement. An agreement is a partnership. Shh, don't tell nobody. Joint venture or other unincorporated organization through or by means of which any business, financial operation, like a business loan, 
like a mortgage loan, like a home loan, like a personal loan, or venture is carried on, or which is not within the meaning of this title, a trust or a state or corporation, and the term partner includes a member of such a group, a pool, a joint venture or organization. That means you and your agreement with the bank, pay attention, is a partnership. It is a group. It is a pool of individuals. It is a venture because you guys have gone into a venture together. One pays the other. It's an unincorporated organization because you guys are not truly registered. It's a trust. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a partnership. And because the bank received the monies, you can't prove that they, yes, you can, because the act says that they're supposed to follow the law. So we can operate on a presumption that they followed the law. That's how we prove it. Okay, and so because they received the funds, I need y'all to pay attention. Then that means they received the credit. So we're going to give them the credit. And we're going to do the paperwork to show that they received the credit. And we're going to show that the debt's been forgiven. Now, I'll give you guys this because some of you need this. When you have an agreement where you know that they've received the monies from the Federal Reserve because the law says, Section 16, Federal Reserve Act, paragraph number four, that when you give them the promissory note along with the application packet, that junk you sign at closing, whether it's a car loan, a stoop loan, or a home loan, okay, they are supposed to take it to the Federal Reserve, not you. So we're going to rely on the fact that everybody followed the law. And if that's the case, then the contract is over. So what you're going to do, since the bank hasn't done it, you're going to do a 1099-C. They're the creditor, you're the debtor. And you're going to do your 1099-C. And you're going to have them send you a copy of the recipient form, which will show that the debt was forgiven. Then you're going to send it to the credit bureau. Say, y'all need to remove that junk. No, nah, they forgave this. Doesn't matter. They got to argue. Now they got to show proof that they didn't forgive it. That the contract is still ongoing. Because they can't. Now, I'm not going to go any further than what I have done because I'm giving y'all too much as it is because there are certain things that we're doing for our clients, but we're helping you guys out, okay, the rest of you. So the last part of the information, you got to do some research because that, that ain't all the pieces because I'm not here to give you all the pieces. That's not my job. I don't work for you, okay? I'm sorry, that Hamas thing, uh, just saw some uh, news that they killed three of their own, just shot them, three of them, just killed three hostages. But then they they kept blaming on Hamas killing the three hostages because it was being videotaped. But normally they would blame it on Hamas. Oh, well. And then there are several footages of them just killing Palestinians, claiming that they're Hamas. Shame on them. Well, YouTube, there you go. I just talked about what Israel has been reporting on their news channel. It's not positive news about Israel, so you can go ahead and take this channel away since nobody can say anything negative about Israel. For some reason, they are greater than God. And people say negative things about God all the time. So I don't know who made Israel greater than God, where you can't say anything negative about them. Somebody's got to talk to me because I don't understand it. I don't understand where anybody would agree that they don't have a right to speak in this country. Where anybody would agree that they don't have a right, not to an opinion, but to tell people the truth. Now, Israel is the one who reported that they killed three hostages, all male. Pay attention. I need you guys to pay attention to this. They were all male. And if they killed them, now remember, they're looking through scopes and uh, binoculars and everything. If they killed them, that's because <laughs> they look like they were Palestinian. So I guess we all do look alike, huh? 
because they couldn't tell the difference. The bad part about it is, ladies and gentlemen, they killed them. They, they killed them. They had their hands up. They were waving white flags. Makeshift flags, but waving them anyway. That, that's, the, that's the flag of giving up. Not a threat. So how do you kill somebody who's not a threat to you? Now, we all know that if it had not been videotaped, it never, been, it never would have been recorded. They would have claimed that Hamas or some terrorist killed them. Again, I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But Israel's news is the one who reported that. So I can't be wrong on reporting what they're reporting because Israel reported this. Imagine that. Gotta go. Y'all take care. Have a good day. Goodbye. Ruben Archie. Adios. Sayonara.